everybody. I'm back to work at this on this painting. It's painting number one here in a three painting series. And it has the same colors, the same color palette as my Lexicon series, as you can see. And quite a difference between the last session and where it was before that. But yeah, it's gotten to be kind of really messy. And but that's OK with me. That's fine. So what I want to do today is uh, start to work in with some shapes that I love. So I've got my container here full of shapes that I've cut out over time. You could call them stencils, but they're, you know, letters, numbers, uh, just unusual shapes. And I'm just going to start to, uh, I'm still playing, but I'm playing now with shape rather than color and texture. Like that was all very playful, but now I'd like to move this painting forward with some shapes that I know that I really respond to. And because these shapes can be large, I can make them large. Um, then I know that I'll have some larger shapes on top of a lot of like scattered color values, texture, like right now it's very chaotic. So what I want to do is put in what I don't have. And that is some calm, more quiet, larger. So I'm thinking about size. So that's what I'm going to do right now and just go into my shape box and find some shapes that I really like. You'll be seeing me use my awl and my yardstick, you know, two of my favorite tools. And I did put that in the caption, but I just wanted to explain that, you know, the awl needs to be quite sharp. And I do use this a lot. And you might be wondering, like, why am I gouging into the surface of this a panel? It's a cradled panel. Now, obviously, you cannot see these gouges because the camera is kind of far away from what I'm doing. But when it shows is when you start to glaze. So I'm kind of doing this knowing that I will be glazing this in the future as well as that I continue to paint on it. Some of the paint does fall into the little gouges that I make with this very sharp awl. And if you don't have an awl, A-W-L, all you have to do is like grab a nail, something like that. You know, you don't have to have an awl, but um, there you can get these at the hardware store. So the purpose of gouging is obviously some texture and when paint falls into the line or if you glaze over the line and then remove a lot of that extra glaze it'll remain in these little crevices and that for me is a great way to set up geometry i wanted to share that um, my favorite brushes for acrylic are usually synthetic and they're usually inexpensive and one of the brushes my very favorite is the one made by Winsor Newton and there are a lot of like cheaper varieties and they're probably just fine like this one for example is a is not a Winsor Newton it, this one's like polar flow there's not that much difference really but ever since my watercolor days I'd say that this has been like my go-to brush the one inch so these are one inch they have a clear handle and you know what they do have on the end is notice this bevel. Let's see if I can show it to you. Um, so that what that what they did for me during the watercolor days was if you had a wash and it was starting to dry, you could actually use this as a mark making tool. Um, so the the brushes that try to imitate the Windsor Newton brush, you know, they've really uh, copied the entire thing, um, and so that that does lessen the price. But I just want to show you that these synthetic brushes are my favorites. And this is professional series 5050 made by Worrisome. But Richeson makes brushes. Um, you know, Richeson is a good brand. Windsor Newton's a good brand. Um, let me know in the comments uh, what your favorite acrylic brushes are. I'd love to know. Okay, so I'm gonna uh, just walk you through what I'm doing here. Um, I'm obviously adding this yellow orange and it's part of my palette that was uh, chosen by our granddaughter and what led to my whole lexicon series. Uh, notice how I start with the yellow orange but then I start to add you know various other colors to it and that can be any color that's on the palette. It can be white, black, or gray. Uh, no matter what color I add to it, it's going to begin to desaturate it. I'm, I'm just adding more and more shapes, lines, marks, 
anything that will move this painting forward. And I'm trying to go for some larger shapes that are quiet. So right now in that upper right hand corner is this lovely color that I, I really like. It's kind of minty. Uh, but I also noticed that if I combine, uh, let's see, yellow green plus the aqua, I get a really pretty blue. And that's what's in that lower left. That was something I discovered while working on this painting. Um, it's still play, but like I mentioned, I'm playing more with assertive shapes now that I can't really say that they have a deep meaning to me at this point, but they're shapes that I relate to. They relate to life and things that I've seen over time. Like I love botany, for example. I love plants. I love gardening. So a lot of these are organic shapes that I uh, think do uh, relate to uh, my love of gardening and uh, pattern. So I know deep down that pattern is very important to me. So here I'm adding a little bit of warm amidst all this cool and really just saying to myself, you know, what don't I have? Now here are some close-ups to kind of see what's going on. The colors never very accurate. Okay, now since the sound wasn't working on my video, I'm going to just talk about this paper I'm holding up here. This was sent to me by a great friend of mine and she lives in the Seattle area. Uh, she just sent me some posters and then here are some of my tracing papers with acrylic on them. These are what I'm going to be using for my collage. This one in particular being very, very dark, that's what attracted me. It was more the value and the fact that it had a little W on it. So now I have to figure out where to put it. And this part is, and I'm gonna be using matte medium. So I'm showing you the Liquitex matte medium, but where I put this matters. Even at this early stage, like I'm kind of placing it around and what matters to me is that it needs to feel good at the time. And notice how there are a lot of places where it just doesn't seem right. Have you ever felt that way? Like just your inner intuition is like, nope, not there and not there. And okay, well, what about here? I think the reason why the upper right hand corner spoke to me is just because it had the least going on. So in terms of balance, even at this early stage, I had things going on in the upper left, lower right, you know, so upper right seemed to need something and this dark collage paper seemed to be it. So I put matte medium on the back and then I put wax paper over the top and I used my brayer to get the wrinkles out the best I could. So I'm pretty careful when I do collage things down just to make sure I get all of it down. And this is a, uh, I had fabric and I just took a photo and printed it on, you know, at a UPS store. So it's a pretty nice print. It's kind of glossy. You kind of see the sheen. And I might use some of this. I've cut off the white edges and I'm just going to tear it now like this because I don't want the whole thing. And I, do I like this piece or do I like this piece? Mm. Go, maybe go for this one here. All right, so now it's a dark, it's got a lot of dark, so it does seem to want to go on the edge. So maybe I'll just stick it down here. Or I could go like, you know, I'll put it down. Or maybe I'll just, instead of doing that, I'm going to tear out little sections of it like this. And wherever I feel like putting it, I'm going to put it like right here. I'm not going to think too hard. the edges on these pieces and I get them down.
So even now, the difference between where I am at this moment compared to where I started uh, in, in my world, this has really moved forward a lot because now, I mean, even if I were to stop right now, I'd say, okay, there's a lot of things I like here. So every time I add collage paper to any of my works, uh, the placement always matters. And I'm sure you can relate to that. Uh, of course, it depends on, you know, how far along your painting is. But as I mentioned, this painting is starting to move forward and I'm probably now more an explorer. Um, I'm not just haphazardly uh, putting things there. I'm actually thinking a little bit. So I call that the explorer stage when I allow my left brain to help me a little bit. Not a lot. It's still allowing my right brain to uh, be the boss. But uh, once I figure out where I want to put a piece, it's just a matter of getting the right orientation. A lot of times a piece of collage paper might have an axis, like a vertical or horizontal axis. And in this case, this little piece actually does have a vertical axis and I wanted to get it on there so that it felt just right. Okay, so what I envision for this painting right now is just to overlap lots of shapes um, in solid colors and let the uh, negative spaces behind these shapes be this underpainting and then I'll proceed from there. There'll be a lot of sanding, etc. One thing I'm realizing um, when you work large scale, uh, I've been working on these small 12 by 12 inch panels for the Lexicon series and the letters I had were perfect for that size, but now that these are like three sizes larger, the panels, I need to scale up my stencils, which means I'm going to spend some time cutting out new stencils that are larger for these larger paintings. And it doesn't mean I won't use some of the smaller ones too, but again, part of scaling up is that everything gets bigger. Okay, so I'll be back.